and dear sisters in Christ and also dear friends following the streamings of the Life for All Institute you are all welcome to one more streaming of the word the Lord is supplying us of the river of grace now we got to message number 25 even though it's no more part of the collection of the daily food but probably we'll be turning these mess extra messages in a book and the title of message 25 is being filled with the spirit for normal human living Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 through 9 Dear brothers and dear sisters, for following us, we are receiving much grace in the book of Ephesians. We did not understand chapter 1 verse 3 of Ephesians referring to the grace that God desires to flow out to man. And man who had been driven out of the Garden of Eden, man who was prevented from having access to the Tree of Life and therefore having access to God himself because of his fall through the serpent who deceived man offering him a capacity which would replace God in directing men's life and this capacity is known as knowledge of good and evil and is poisoning man up until today and it is deceiving many religious people even many Christians thinking that they are serving God by using our own capacity to serve yet they barely know that this doesn't bring fruit of life to God but blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every kind of spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ brothers and sisters this is simply grace that God opened up its doors because God in the Garden of Eden closed the way to the Garden of Life but he did not flow the f not close the flow of the river going out to water the garden and there it divided in four river heads this shows that clearly that God desires to save man to reach man who had been driven out of the Garden of Eden Brothers and sisters, after the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, he suffered in the hands of the man he came in to save. He was persecuted, he was killed, and killed with the worst death, the death of the cross. But all of that, it is to accomplish redemption, the eternal redemption for us. And not only that, when he rose up, God raised him up from the dead. And made him to made him Lord and Christ and that man was made a son of God an only begotten son of God because God desired to save many men as his children so in this way uh, the firstborn sorry so Jesus came to earth and reached man as a source of life source of grace he became the spirit the spirit today it is the river of grace coming to every man who believes in Jesus 
Jesus died, but in resurrection, he was glorified, and in glorification, he became the Spirit to make it concrete, to complete John 7, 37 through 39. Jesus, on the last day of the Feast of the Jews, he stood up, stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Brothers and sisters, this is a promise that river would reach us by believing. Look how precious this is. On earth, man, he has no need to pay for penitence for his mistakes. He has only to confess his sins, to believe in Jesus, to confess with his mouth that Jesus is his Lord. This man, by faith, he was saved, and by grace we are saved. And the river that was not prevented from flowing out of the Garden of Eden entered him. We began to be channels of this river of grace, not only to receive grace, but also to flow out to others. And God is using us so much to flow out. That is why I say to the saints here in the church, we cannot be a dead sea. A dead sea receives the river of grace, but it stops there. It doesn't flow anywhere else because it, it's, it is the lowest point in the region. There's nowhere else to flow. So there, the water of grace comes in that doesn't go out. So then it, that's a dead sea with no fish, no life. Therefore, we cannot be in the church but just receiving the word, receiving grace, waiting always to have grace from the Lord. No, no, no. We are channels to receive grace and to flow out to others. Because on the day that we receive and believe in the Lord Jesus, rivers of living water entered us to flow out of us. He who believes in me, out of his inner being, shall flow rivers of living water. John explains to us, but this is spoken concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given. While Jesus was still crying out, was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. But today, Jesus was crucified, God raised him up from the dead, he was glorified, he became the spirit of reality, the other comforter, the Father promised to give us, and he added in those who believed in him. And he became rivers of living water flowing out of us. We received many grace, much grace flowing out, much grace to others. That is why, brothers and sisters, we need to be those channels. Do not retain for yourselves. Go out to the streets. Preach the gospel. Go out to the streets. And you may say, okay, you don't need to go there on purpose if you don't feel like. But you have some contact on the streets. You need to go on the store. You need to go at a bakery to buy bread. You need to go to a gas station to fill up your tank. And you have your daily chores on the streets. You're, you run your errands on the street, so you can be this channel of grace to flow to others. We have just to break, rupture this, uh, our shy, to break this shy and then just ask others, may I pray for you? Let that slip from your mouth. And then certainly, God prepare the heart of those who will say, yes, the, they will be people who will be desperate to receive the river of grace. When the river of grace passes through you, the grace is constituted in you further. What is grace after all? Grace is God himself with all his riches, with his divine life, with his holy nature. God is sanctifying his church through the flow of this river, and this grace, it is 
it also brings all the divine attributes. What attributes are those? God is righteousness. God is holiness. God wants to put his elements of glory in us. And God still is love. And God is light. And more than that, God also through grace, through the river flowing out of us and passing through us, is also bringing the human virtues that we need to live here. These human virtues were uplifted by the human living of Jesus Christ. And they are also within as the elements of grace flowing through us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, while we're serving as channels, the Lord is filling us with His grace, and this grace will make us grow. This grace will mature us. This grace will build up the church. And with the flow of grace, also there is another result. The result, it is that we will be filled with the reality. When man in the Garden of Eden was disconnected from God, he rather chose the element that gives him capacity to judge. For men to live by his own capacity, brothers and sisters, in the tree of knowledge of good and evil, man was disconnected from God. And in this universe, only God is the truth. Only God is the very reality. Because before all creation was, there was only God. Because in this universe, only God is the truth. Only God is reality. When man was deceived by the serpent, he was disconnected from God. He was disconnected from the truth. He was disconnected from reality. And how can how man lives without the reality, full of vanity in his thoughts? Human thoughts are vain. And human life is vanity of vanities. As King Solomon said, in the splendor of his days, he said, I experienced everything. I've been through all. I experienced wealth, wisdom, all of the pleasures in this world. But this world is nothing but vanity. And human life is vanity of vanities because it was disconnected from reality. All of our problems in marriage... All of our problems in our relationship with others, all of our problems with, in our human life, some even think that this human life is meaningless. Brothers and sisters, why? Because of this emptiness, because of this gap in our human life of the reality. We have no reality. And then we try to fill up this, these gaps, these holes of the lack of... Uh, Reality of many things, and these things cannot fill us up. So praise God. When the more we flow with the, 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 the more we enjoy this flow of grace it passes through us, and we care for people. What is happening, brothers and sisters? The holes in our lives are being filled with the very reality, with the very truth. Our life is becoming consistent. It's becoming what assurance and security people begin to rely on us why because now our life has meaning has reality that is why I spoke about the married life it is pointless just to have couples meetings meetings for couples if we do not get to this line of enjoying grace this old format of a speaker giving lectures and teaching couples, this doesn't work, brothers and sisters. We have to bring those couples to enjoy the river of grace. This grace is the only one that can fill us with the reality. And then our married life with reality begins to have less holes for misunderstanding and difficulties. Do you understand? All of our difficulties are holes, holes of lack of reality. So praise God. The more we allow in the river of grace, the more we'll have less difficulties in our 
marriage and relating to others. Why? Because we are gaining reality. And more than that, in the river of grace, you'll be diving in, in. Then you'll be seeing God himself with his love. The love is donation. You begin not by the strength of knowledge. You begin to love others because this love is constituted in you. You begin to live a life of giving yourself. You're capable of going out to the streets without people paying for you to preach the gospel, right? All of us, we go to the streets, we pay, we, not, we, we preach the gospel not receiving anything. We just receive grace, right? Why? Because love overflows in us. God's love is so great. He's the donor in this universe. Everything that makes you to live here was his donation. Water, the air, food, right? Temperature, sun, rain, all of it comes from his donation. But the greatest donation of God is giving his own son to you. Well, this life is in us. We begin to love the saints. We begin to care for people. We begin to love people who need to be rescued out of this other kingdom of darkness. So, still, we begin to find, when diving into this river of grace, God himself has light, we begin to live in light, right? Brothers and sisters, problems in marriage, betrayal, envy, all of that is lack of light. If we begin to live in light, under the light, you realize any shade, any beginning of sin, you already go to the Lord in any dim light, you realize it. And if we confess our sins, uh, God is faithful and righteous to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This is in First John chapter 1. Brothers and sisters, that's how we are living, in light, right? And in light, we are never proud. In light, we are never, but we never boast. Because in light, we know who we are. We know the Lord, right? So this is the life God wants to His church. It's not just here by living here and join us so much grace, right? Our husbands enjoying grace, wives enjoying grace, the word, immersing in the word, so on and so forth. And when we get home, we'll just fight, right? We have to have this reality. To be filled with the Spirit, it is for the married life. Today I'll be speaking about being filled with the Spirit for the normal human life in, in all its aspects. So, saints, praise God. The Lord is giving us a wonderful tool. First is the prophetic word. The word the Lord is speaking today. The word the Lord is speaking in his mouth every and each day. There is no lack of words of direction. There is no lack of word of grace. And this word, brothers and sisters, makes everything to happen. Do remember when God created this universe. God said, let there be light, and there was light. It all happens through the word. John chapter 1 verse 1, what does it say? In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. And in verse 14, what does it say? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The Lord is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Right? Isn't that right? So everything, it is through the word. First John, there we read what? We are now sent to you and hear the word of life. So saints, everything, it is through the word. And Jesus Christ is the very word. The word is a vehicle. The word is this river flowing out to you, bringing God himself to you. So for God to do his work in the church and through the church, the vehicle he uses is the word. Many have that mystical idea. Okay, let us hear the Holy Spirit has to say, but brothers and sisters, 
the Lord, from the moment he he went to be with the Lord, the Lord is giving men as channels to dispense his word. When he departed, he trained his disciples, showing them that the word, there is a word, that's his, his presence is there. In resurrection, he came in the body of resurrection, no more in the body of flesh. When he appeared, the disciples did not recognize him. When he spoke, the disciples, oh, so it's the Lord. So he was training his disciples that his presence is in his word. When on the day of the Pentecost, the church was brought forth. And from then on, Saints Jesus no longer appeared physically, not even in the body of resurrection. From then on, God began to use the Apostle Peter, a man. Brothers and sisters, many people confuse that. No, God speaks through the Holy Spirit. He doesn't use men. No, no, no. God uses man. The Apostle Peter began to be used. And then the Apostle Paul began to be the dispensing, channel to be dispensed for this gospel to get to the Gentile world the way it got today. Praise God. Through the ministry of Paul, brothers and sisters, the word got to Macedonia, to Greece, got to Turkey, today's Turkey, and was spread to Europe, all the way to Rome, and then the gospel got to the uh, Western world because of the dispensing of a channel of grace. When Paul went to be with the Lord, the Lord used John, even though he wanted to bring, in the book of Revelation, he wanted to bring Revelation to all the saints, but he notified one man, John. John was the channel. And then he uh, he then passed on to his servants. He sent to John, signified it by his angel, to servant John and to the church. That's the problem. When there's a channel, when man is a channel, many people claim themselves to be the channel. But brothers and sisters, it's very clear in the Bible, when a prophet speaks by, for God, Things confirm. Jesus himself, in John 6, set, showed his disciples. The disciples wanted a sign that he was sent by God, and Jesus said, I have no other testimony to give it to you, not even John the Baptist will, will give a testimony that was sent by God. No. The Father himself testified of me because the works that he gives me to do these works that I do, actually it's not I who do, he does in me, proves that I'm sent by God. So brothers and sisters, how do you know that if the apostle Paul was sent one by God, it is by the word which is confirmed. The word is confirmed and the work of God it goes on, moves on and happens. Praise God in our days. It is not lacking word. The Lord continues speaking to us. That is why, brothers and sisters, the word keeps advancing. The word is advancing. So, not even we ourselves have such a faith for what the Lord is doing only this year 2022. We are reconquering the African continent. Even though we have entered in the year 2000 in the African continent, from 2000 up until today, the situation was merely a survival situation. Nothing would happen stronger in the spread of the work there. So, saints, we had to think that we are workers of the 11th hour. God gave us powerful tools to advance. So in the old way, in conventional, traditional ways, sharing messages, caring for the churches, saints, we don't go that far. The African continent was like that. It, they needed our offerings for maintenance, and we did not go any further with that. Praise God, the Lord gave us light. Let us use the tool God gave us. The Lord is turbocharging this tool. And then, praise God, we began in Angola, 
Here the Saints are here. Since we're caring for Angola, Mauricio from Region 6 in Ledevaldo, right? He just returned. Has a burden to go there. The, the GPC is already working. But they will still bring the coordinators here. We'll perfect them. When they return, that does have, I want to return with them. I want to see things working as it should. Now things will take off. They're all here. Amir is here. Amir is here. I don't want him to go to Africa because of his health situation. He had to go to Kenya and Uganda. Saints, things are moving there. And in a miraculous way, the Lord gave us facilities for the GPC both in Kenya and Uganda. And now, he just returned from Congo. I sent him to Congo with a pain in my heart. I said, Amir, I have no physical condition to go. He said, I will, I will go, I'll go. He had to go. Brothers and sisters, only one church in Congo, in Kinshasa, we have 600 saints meeting there, out of which 480 are young ones. They are eager to practice the word. And there it is difficult to rent a place for that. The Lord made us to find a three-story building with a capacity for 120 GPCers. There are already 200 registered. And our mighty men of David went to South Africa. They went to Mozambique and Madagascar. The Vilazio went to Malawi. Brothers and sisters, we'll be meeting this week to draw a strategy how we'll begin GPC co-boarding printing books. The saints in Region 4 in the Northeast, they were etching their hands. Oh, everyone is getting into Africa. We have to do our part too. They spoke to me this time, this weekend. Shopson said to me, we have to go in. We want to go to Cape Verde and Guinea-Bissau. They'll be going in December, this December. And the Lord opened the door already. There was a pastor who lived for four years. She's caring for a good group of Christians. She returned to Brazil. She cannot remain there anymore. She said there's nobody to care for Christians there. I want to give it to you. Saints, who does this work? Now, for many years that I visited the churches in the U.S., strengthening the church, strengthening the saints, saints in a turtle pace. And Brother Dung said, this doesn't work. Let us have GPC and co porters but in the first stage, we're moving slowly. Praise God, today is a different situation. Today we have mighty men of David there working. We have, a, we have four book expos there. We're lacking co-porters and GPCers in the U.S. because it's useless to just send people from here. After their visa is expired, they cannot remain. That was our great obstacle in the U.S. But this time in Florida, the Lord gave us a light. Do you forget that Puerto Rico is, belongs to the U.S.? Go to Puerto Rico. Fifty saints in the U.S. are registered to go to Puerto Rico in a, couple, in a few weeks from now. We'll be moving that island. That island belongs to the U.S. They are American citizens. Their official language is English. But they were settled by the Sp Spaniards. They speak Spanish. They have a Latino blood. They are joyful. But the young ones, they don't have what to do there. 
either they go to they go on drugs or or something will give them a reason to live. We'll be raising many GPS years there. Many will be co porters we'll, we'll cause a revolution in the U.S. And Europe, it is the same thing. Just of maintenance and survival, some contacts and some churches. We cannot move on with that. Not even with, in a 200 years time we conquer a continent. But praise God, saints, we began to get the saints to go co porting and GPC and now things are advancing in Portugal, in Spain. We entered Italy. Where are Italians here? Oh, there's a couple here. They came here to change their chip, their SIM card. Now Germany is asking for help. I also want to get there. Saints, this is the way. We bought a piece of land in Torres Vedras, close to Lisbon, to have a, a gospel perfecting center there. We paid there. The work is beginning there uh, to work on the ground. We are while it's not ready, the facility, we are doing the GPC in work, on wheels. What I want to say, it's even in Brazil, if it depends on the conventional way. Oh, just care for the church, share them a message, you return. He will be okay, but in some time he will just go back to the same situation. And the work cannot advance from there. How many cities that we are carrying here in our region? São Paulo, metropolitan area of São Paulo, Vale Paraíba, Vale Ribeira, so on and so forth, they are still just tilting. We need to bring them into this uh, tools the Lord gave us. Right? Praise God, the Lord still get, is beginning to turn in the, the inland of São Paulo, right, Hamilton? The church are getting in line. They're being aligned. They're using these tools and things are beginning to move. So I'm seeing all of that, brothers and sisters. We can no longer to live a religious church life, a conventional and traditional way. Let us take advantage here, brothers and sisters, the tool the Lord is giving us, these tools the Lord is giving us to make a turn, to really to give conditions for the Spirit to operate. While you're thinking that your capacity can meet the Lord's needs, the Lord cannot put his hands. Saints, let us be convinced that we need to give it all to the Lord to work. In the last week, 131 women went to be immersed in the Word at GPC Lorena. By their testimonies, The great thing that they enjoyed, because it all came through the word in the international conference, when we began to speak about the word of order, which was very good for the churches to enter in this kind of living that the, the GPCers, the co porters are living, because they are giving themselves 24 7 in the prophetic word immersed in the river of grace 24 7 immersed in the spirit live in the spirit it is a lie if they say co-porting for money making co going co-porting for money it doesn't flow it doesn't work co-porting for burden for the prophetic word and out of love for people and then brothers and sisters i like this kind of living that they are their life they're living 24 hours in the spirit because outside of the spirit it doesn't work it doesn't flow like to to turn that environment to the normal church life and many brothers and sisters they have their errands they have to, to their things to do maybe they don't have 24 hours to to have experience like that but they have some sort of experience 
Praise God, when we said that in an international conference in the morning, in the word of order, sisters reacted first. Man, what a shame. Women always react first. Immediately, but this is not even after one hour, two hours, immediately they began to contact each other. Let us register next immersion. And Johannes was desperate. Oh, we don't have room for that many people. So then 130 women went to be immersed. Still, there was a line of uh, many other women who could not get there because of the capacity. What is that, brothers and sisters? It is the heart they have to join. They registered. In the heat of the moment, they made registration, but at the moment to go, last week they begin to have a fly in their stomach. They have this fly in their stomach and they begin to say a number of different excuses not to go, but praise God nobody gave up. The Lord encouraged them all. They all went. They had wonderful experiences, amazing experiences and supernatural experiences. You know what I appreciated the most since that's what I wanted to say to you. What I appreciated the most is that they were taking to the breaking point. Human God wants to take us to this human breaking point, saying that from this point forward, I cannot do it myself. The Lord himself can do that. So, sister, at least 80% did not experience that. They were very afraid, fear, right? But saints, the Lord wants to make us to dive into this river while we are still in our normal church life. Jobson said yesterday, right, we have our cloaks or status in the church, our position in the church, our experiences in the church. I can share a message Am I preaching the saints like it? I know this, I know that. I'm a responsible brother, I'm a coordinator, I'm a co-worker, this or that. While I would don't put off the cloak, you cannot dive in. Right, Chubson? You thought the conference we had last week, you were already in the peak, right? But the three days you, you were in the pocket this week, you saw that the first day, to so not dive in much. Second, halfway, one was third day, brothers and sisters. He did not know where he was. The first day, we took him to a food court. Somebody was there eating. He said, for God's sake, I am annoyed when people come in and do that to me. So how will I do that? The first day, he was in himself. He was in his... The, the, in the man, the limit of men. On the second day, he got better, a bit better. The third day, he said, whatever happens, I have no more difficulty. I'm not shy. Airport, food court, no shyness. It doesn't matter anywhere. You could only see the river. You could only see love to people. That was the sister's experience as well. A sister who likes chocolate gave a testimony that she was sent to preach the gospel, the gospel in a chocolate store. She did not even see that there was chocolate around her. So the Lord wants to break us, take us to a breaking point. While you're thinking that you can do something on your capacity, God will not do it. That is why, brothers and sisters, I'm desperate to ask all of you, all of you, to have a little bit of this experience. Let us have this experience. Our gypsy cannot stand with all of us. Uh, we don't have room to everyone, but many saints are beginning to move, right? It's a bit late, but, but we don't have capacity for that much. So, this December, we have some Saturdays. 
Let us begin next Saturday. Everybody comes here before 9. Let us be immersed in the word up until 10. At 10 we have the live streaming and then 11.30 we go out everybody. Let us go out to the streets. Then we'll be separated in different teams. We're not have lunch at that time. We'll have lunch only after when we come back at 12, 12.30 for lunch, okay? When we have lunch, we share our testimonies of what happened. We can be here up until 3.30, 4 p.m. It doesn't take much of your time, does it? So let's try to do that every Saturday. Is that okay? Not just for the church of Sao Paulo, all brothers and sisters here. Okay? Let us spread this environment to everyone. Brothers and sisters, otherwise we'll be just in the traditional, and the conventional, and things will not move on with that. You know, like I, I, sh I shared a word. There is a pre-election for this people, like the, the coach giving a word for his team. Can I share that with you too? The Lord always used Brother Dong to open the way that got to Africa all over the world. He suffered a lot to prepare a generation of 40 years. We're uh, opening the front lines. And then he got a work of a group of co workers cooperating with him. Not so good, but uh, at least he had a group of co workers sweating, but still was a minority doing the work. But now, praise the Lord. Lord has a new stage. Things are moving way faster. Praise God. I'm going back and forth, you know. I had a flu and when I went to the U.S. and I went to New York and Boston was cold. We went down to Florida, hot, with cold air conditioning. You know what it's like air conditioning in the U.S. And I, I did not get over the flu, coughing. Then I returned home. I had to go to Bolivia. Bolivia is cold. We, we, we land in the airport, 2,400 2, altitude. When you land, you have to be careful with with your hand luggage. You have to go slow motion. If you go a bit faster, you faint because of the altitude and cold. And we went to La Paz. La Paz is 3,800 to 4,000 meters of altitude. The Lord was able to turn a country. Bolivia was behind. He asked for forgiveness, repented, they will move on, they will begin a GPC, 90 people, 90 gypsiers 90 in La Paz. I returned and I went to the northeast. The northeast, the, the warmth of the northeast, I took uh, long sleeved, but I did not wear them. With the short sleeved, I was drenched in sweat. Air conditioning, it's just a decoration. The saints were really warm, praise God. So much so that Shobson and Abraham thought that they experienced a high peak, but now they experienced it in the pack, the, the high peak. What I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, it's not have just one for to sweat, two, ten, fifty, hundred. We have to have the whole team. Let us sweat our t-shirts, all of us. Only in this way we'll be able to bring the Lord back. Few working, taking, carrying this dead uh, weight of this big mass, the Lord will not return. I said to them, a little bit of the history, those who like American basketball, a little bit of Michael Jordan's story. 
some know here, right? Maybe he was considered the best basketball player ever. From college teams in the university, he was hired by Chicago Bulls. Brothers and sisters, he had a special skill and uh, he was a leading scorer and uh, they made his team for him, for him to score and he, they won, won, won. Uh, in the end, in the, in the finals, they found out how to stop this team by stopping Michael Jordan. They stopped him in an ugly way, with uh, ugly fouls, and they, they, they beat the team. Later, there was another coach, Phil Jackson. He said, let us put up a team, not based upon Michael, Michael Jordan. Michael, not Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, sorry. Michael Jordan. And then, this team began, began to lose vulnerability. They began to win, win, win. But, brothers and sisters, in the playoffs, I don't know if you know American basketball, they have their West Coast Conference and the East Coast Conference. And the winner in the West Coast plays with the winner in the East Coast in, a, in, the, in the playoffs. And the, the, the best one gets a title. So if you 4 to 0, you win the title. 5 to 1, you win the title. So, is that correct? Yeah, 4, four to 0, then you win. Chicago Bulls was in the peak, but they lost in the playoffs. Second year, Chicago Bulls got the, their best preparation that they could. They were ready to take to win the title. They played seven matches on the sixth. They tied three to three. Seventh game was uh, on the playoff. Exactly on that day, Michael Jordan's. Scott Pittens had a problem with a tiebreaker, and Scott Pittens could not see while he was playing, and he, they lost. They were really disappointed, those who prepared to be a champion. You know what did they do? That's what I want to say to you. The next day, after the, their defeat, Michael Jordan proposed to the whole team, we're not going on vacation. We'll be prepared tomorrow. I will propose myself even to be prepared physically because he's ex very skilled but still a little bit frail and those big uh, ones were coming with a for a rebound and they pushed and they would just uh, beat him so he said I, I will get a body mass and he began to, to gain weight just with body mass. They, they, they practiced tactics and all the, they went through all the trainings and in their meeting. This year, the whole team has to be committed, not just to give 100% of, of himself, but be giving ourselves 110% of ourselves. That's what I'm proposing to you. Do not be accommodated. Let us give ourselves a hundred percent. Shall we? First for what? To get other brothers and sisters involved. To get others involved in this environment of being immersed in the word, GPC, co-porting, to preach the gospel. Brothers and sisters, this change people. We'll never be the same. Why not to influence others? Saints, let us make whole church to get into this fear. We want to bring the Lord back. And with the spread, in this way, I believe that in Italy they said, they found a Christian who's a professional translator to Arabic. When we entered Africa, said the saints, saints, 
My ambition is to get to Central Africa. Not even think about entering to the north of Africa. How come we will be entering the Muslim countries? Sudan, Tunisia, Egypt, Saudi Arabia. How can we get to those countries in the Middle East? So what I want to say, saints, I never thought about it, but the Lord opened the door. We are translating our first book in Arabic. Let us put up a team to bring the Lord back. I'm calling all of you, all of you. Let us have this different experience. In a conventional way, we'll not be able to bring the Lord back. Lord Jesus, I cannot even get into the message. Are you in? Let us give all, all of ourselves. I said to the saints, the way the Lord is moving so fast, we do not even thought about getting to Malaysia. There are possible contacts in Indonesia and Malaysia. Then we'll be in Vietnam, Laos, Lagos, Southeast Asia. We not even thought about it. I believe that Korea will still get a work in this new way. In Japan, we have saints there. Let us move them. Also, the whole world is part of this team, Lord Jesus. I said to the saints, now I have a hope to see the Lord alive. I said to the saints, I don't want to be on a wheelchair. I want to be active. To have to make haste. Are you in? Are you up for this challenge? You know, attacks will come. They're coming. You be sure. Be assured, the attacks will be always against the prophetic word. The prophetic word. The attacks are always against the source of the work. But we are not intimidated. This oneness that we have this harmony, this partnership among us. If each member really gives themselves 110% in a short time, we'll be cooperating with the Spirit and gain this earth to the Lord. Lord Jesus. So let me do this. I don't have much time. Let me read a little bit of the, the south line. The, the first part that I did was a recap. Saying the dispensation of grace has a goal. Until we are filled with all the fullness of God. If we still use halfway, like my, a little bit of my capacity and biblical knowledge, the Lord will not be able to reach this goal. Because in Ephesians 3, 2, let us read it. Paul was this dispenser. Ephesians 3, 2. If indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already. Verse 7. Of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Pay attention, brothers and sisters, when it is about grace, it's not your power. It's not your capacity. It is the effective working of God's power. To me, who am last and the least of all the saints, this grace was given. This is grace that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Brothers and sisters, we are dealing with spiritual and heavenly things, things of Christ, things of God. Do not mix it up with your capacity. Do not mix it up with your power, with your strength. Saints, unfortunately, Christianity, even in the church, we are using still a bit of our strength, our capacity, but now we are learning, brothers and sisters, how to use 100% of the Lord's strength. 
been simple, but living in the Word, practicing, your Lord is doing it. Lord Jesus. And chapter 4, we see that grace makes us to walk in a worthy manner, makes a worthy calling of our calling. It's not just a in the message, oh, this is so good, the knowledge, but gra grace is to supply us, in verse 2, with all lowliness and gentleness. That is, we are not speaking of a, an empty doctrine. It has to really change our behavior. It has to change our essence, right? So this grace supplies us with lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering. This grace makes us to be concerned with one another, bearing one another in love. Love overf is over overflows us, we begin to bear one another. We are no longer selfish, individualistics. If anyone has any problem, we don't criticize them, we don't judge them, we support them, we bear them for them to stand up, right? in their mo most difficult moment of weakness to be strengthened. So let us help one another. Let us pray for one another. This is the way of victory. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So it is the unity of the Spirit, not manufactured by man. So in the flow of grace, Remember always that the river is the Spirit, the flow of the river of grace, which is the Spirit, brothers and sisters. We will keep this unity. While in Ezekiel 47, I'm living the church life with water on my feet. I have a direction. The Spirit has another direction. I have my moves, my activities. I serve the Lord, so on and so forth. The Spirit has a different direction. But at the moment that I more and more I dive in to the river of grace, I have no more just one direction different from the flow of the Spirit. Because my direction is the direction of the Spirit. That is why, brothers and sisters, it is important to be immersed, to dive into this river. You know why the natural man is afraid of diving into the river? Because he's afraid of sink, to sink in the river. How can I get into that? How can I preach the gospel in a food court? How can I go to a grocery store? I've never been there. I hate to do that. Brothers and sisters, I'll die. I'll, I'll, I, will, I will sink. The one who will sink will be the natural man. The, your human natural force will sink. But when you really dive, you notice that you can breathe, but not the breathe with a natural breathing, you can breathe in your spirit. You can realize that you're getting to another sphere in the water. Have you experienced being in the water? In the water is a different sound, right? It's another hearing. Outside, you can hear many noises, uh, this and that. Uh, everyone eating in the food court, and when you get it down here, we just hear of the water, right? Let us dive in. Let us get out of our natural being, of our perception of a natural man. Circumstances scares us. Well, let us dive in. When you are immersed, you see nothing else. Else, You see love, grace, people saved, people being brought to the net of care. That's it, brothers and sisters. And then in verse 7, 7 through 16, grace gave gifts to men to perfect the members because we're members in this body. And by grace, we receive grace, uh, gifts, gifts is to function. Praise God, I did not know how to function. But Paki helped me to know that I can preach the gospel. Right? So, saints, grace gave gifts to the body, for the members of the body, for the perfecting of its members, for the work of the ministry. We are not just doing our work. We are doing one work. 
We are playing for one team with one goal. For the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. By following the truth, which is the word. Following the word in love. The members of the body grow in him who is head. Christ, from whom the whole body, this is in the Ephesians 4, joined and held together by every joint's help, we're just able to do that in this flow. The spirit, in the headship of Christ, the head is in charge now. It's not you or me. Joined and held together by every joint's supply according to the right cooperation of each part. Uh, that is, we all do our share. We have to be in this game. Let us get in. 110%. Each share. Facts the growth of the body. For what? For uh, the building up of itself in love. Because we are in this river of grace. God is love. And then the supply of grace free us from walking like the Gentiles do. We have been freed from walking in the vanity of our thoughts with no reality, right? Even that someone is smart and wise in this world, still his thoughts are vain, are not connected to God. But saints, our understanding was in darkness because we were disconnected from God alien to the life of God because of the ignorance in which we lived. Actually, saints, this ignorance lasted even up until now. But this moment, we're really having idea what is to live in the Spirit. Because of the hardness of our heart, we have lost all our feelings. The Gentiles then were indulged, indulged in a depraved lifestyle the world was indulged in this de depraved lifestyle, greedily committing all kinds of impurity, right? That's what the world we're living in. This is the way of life of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. But now, supplied by grace, we are learning Christ. It's not learning from Christ. If you are learning from Christ, you're still learning lessons, learning thoughts. But you're learning Christ, meaning Christ is the head. He is guiding you how to live in reality. We are learning Christ as is the truth or reality in Jesus. You see this in this verse, right? Verse 21, Ephesians 4, 21, right? 20 and 21, right? Ephesians 4, 20 and 21. Now let me get to 23. Grace makes you to put on the new man. What is to put on the new man? That is, you're living aside the lifestyle that the whole world was living in the old man, but now... We are putting on a new garment. We're, we're living in a lifestyle of the new man, being immersed in the word, to preach the gospel, to build up the church, right? To care for one another. It's a new lifestyle. And this new lifestyle, brothers and sisters, it is of the new man. This new man is created according to God. A created to, according to God in righteousness and holiness proceeding from the truth. When you have this reality, you will fill the gaps of unrighteousness, of impurity, of lack of holiness, because the truth, the reality, brings in God's righteousness, and reality brings God's holiness. Lord Jesus, and then we'll be full of reality, no longer full of voids. Thus, all the voids in our life and our behavior will be filled with the truth in Jesus. This protects us. This makes us 
not to have difficulties that we have in our relationships, in marriage, in our family relationship with the saints building the church, we have much difficulties because of these holes. I have to fill these holes with the truth. Verse 25, we leave the lie, putting away lying, let one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Why to speak lies? Why do to, to nudge each other, to poke each other, to hurt each other? We are members. We are, we are in the same team. We are building the same body. And no more, we no longer sin in anger. We put aside all theft. Everyone work honestly for their need and also to help the needy. This is in verse 28. Has need. No corrupt word proceeds out of our mouth, but what is good for necessary edification. And we impart grace to the heaters as channels of grace. Let us let us not allow anything else to pro, to come out to corrupt anybody, to cause damage to anybody. But let us just impart grace because we are immersed in grace in our relationships. In verse thirty-two, in our relationships, let us be filled with kindness and compassion, feelings of empathy. Grace, give us this compassion, this empathy. We are, we are worried about each other. In the past, each any people made a mistake, we criticized them, but today we try to understand the situation that they're going through, right? So we begin to feel empathy and then you can help. If you're just looking on the outside and criticize, you cannot help. Well, praise God. What else? Lord Jesus, and we learn, brothers and sisters, to forgive each other. Forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave us. Why not? Not just an outward imitation. This grace is supplying us this quality of Christ. We are able to forgive one another. To, for building, we need to forgive each other. If up until today you are still holding grudge against anybody, or in your home, in your marriage, or in your family, Saints, let us be freed by forgiving. Let us not one day get into our coughing with grudges, with bitterness. No. Let us be freed. Let us learn to forgive one another. Then in chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, we see that grace brings us to God who is love. We walk in love. Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. We begin to have this love inside of us. It's not merely changing behavior, but God is filling us with His love. We begin also, brothers and sisters, to have this action of giving ourselves, of surrendering for people to preach the gospel in the streets, to care for the saints, to build up the church, to serve the Lord in the church, right? Give Himself for us. This is and offering the sacrifice to God for sweet-smelling aroma. When we do that, out of love, as giving to the saints, God is pleased. He smells that a sweet-smelling aroma. And grace takes us to God, who is light. Now we are light in the Lord. We must walk as children of light. And light exposes all things of darkness, making us to be sensitive to sin and anything of darkness. Saints, how good it is to walk in light. If you have anything of envy, light reveals it to you. If you have something of discord, disagreement, light shines you, shines in you. How good it is to walk in light. Let us learn to walk in light. If you're living a light of a, 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 a life of sin, Light begins to bother you, and it exposes all things of darkness. In First Timothy one five, we are sensitive to sin and anything of darkness. For what? To keep us always with a pure heart, to keep a pure heart at all times in a good conscience. Let us keep saints always a pure heart, always a good conscience. Also live in light. 
can be kept like that. As we walk in light, we keep fellowship with one another. Sometimes you cannot fellowship with each other. Why? Because you're not in the light. Those who are in light, they have a smooth fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses from all sin. We are not immune from sinning. We are not immune. But we must confess our sins to keep ourselves in the light. As a result of walking in the light, we always maintain a contrite and repentant spirit. We're never proud, arrogant. Those who are in light is never arrogant. Those who are in light, they have a contrite spirit, a repented spirit, a broken heart, and a humble heart. Far from us all arrogance and pride. Lord Jesus. Then grace comes to man through the word and the spirit. Jesus said to the, the Jews, to his disciples, the words I'm, tell, I'm, I'm speaking to you are spirit and life. And the river that came out of Eden to reach man is the spirit. Therefore, saints, we must be filled with the Spirit to live a normal human life and not to seek satisfaction in the wine of this world. Because we'll be distracted with many things that men are running after. Running after money, reputation, wealth, a good house, even saints, a good marriage to the center of the world. Saints, this is not what we're lo looking for. We're looking to serve the Lord and to do His will. We must be fill ourselves with the Spirit with, to to ha to have a normal human life, not seeking satisfaction in the wine of the world. We do we do everything for God's will to be done. We must fill ourselves with the Spirit by speaking among ourselves, in the immersion in the Word, and also stirring the cauldron. First Corinthians 14 shows us one end of being filled with the Spirit and our mind getting nothing, is to speak in tongues. That is why there was this practice of speaking in tongues. We're speaking to God, the Spirit is exercised, but the mind has no fruit without fruit. So, saints, that is why many times people here are using this thing that they're spiritual, but their mind gains nothing. So this is one end, to speak in tongues. But saints, this uh, war cries proclaiming, we enter into the sight that the mind is working. The mind is used, right? Then we have these war cries, our mind is used. So then this begins what? To warm up our spirit. We begin to exercise the spirit. This is needed. It is needed to have a spirit exercised, a strong spirit. And then you care for the mind. But in, in immersing the word, in proclaiming the phrases, you begin to use your mind. Your spirit is exercised. You have a strong spirit, but you also your mind is nurtured as well. But we can also have everyone to use the spirit with phrases, immersing in the word, using that when everyone is 100% in the spirit. We can spend some tw about 20 minutes in small groups, right? According to the word that we read, we can st stir the cauldron. And we used that expression 20 years ago. So when Brother Dong gave Revelation the word, I fear that the Revelation, we hear the word in a superficial way. Let us enter the word. And I said to saints in our service, in our service meeting, we had a group of people. We began to immerse in the word. But then you, if you nurture your mind, you begin to exercise. Oh, I received light in this word. I received again how much God does not want to use my capacity. I want to dive into this river of life, for the Lord to do his work, and then you say, oh, I also received this light, so and so forth. Imagine, after four or five speak, 
adding up light, that is, each one steering uh, that cauldron of the prophetic word, then a delicious food will come out. This not only nurtures your spirit, your soul is fruitful. You will be growing in life. You will be going deeper in the Lord. You will begin to understand what the will of the Lord is. The Lord is adding up. So let us do this practice. I cannot explain much. But so we must be filled with the Spirit always giving thanks for everything to God and the Father. If we are immersed in the river of grace, everything that happens in our life, it is on God's side. It's because of God. Even things that we, we, we consider them to be misfortune. It's, this is not bad luck, saints. All things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. So we must be filled in the Spirit also, learning to submit to one another. In the past, we were very legalist. Wives, you must submit to me, or you who are younger have to hear the elderly. This is correct. The, the Bible teaches that, but let us learn, saints, in our spirit, in grace, to subject to one another. Sometimes the Lord gave a portion to this one that he may be younger than me. I shall learn to hear him, right? My wife says sa sa some words. Maybe somebody else cannot dare to say. I have to learn to submit to what he's, she said. Do you understand? So we have to learn to live in the Spirit. To learn to be filled in the Spirit, speaking among us, giving thanks for God, for everything to God and the Father, and also being submitting to one another. And let us enter now in parents and children. Ephesians 6, verses 1. Through four. Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you, fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. I forgot to drink water. Sorry about that. Brothers and sisters, after some time, children grow up, you may realize that they tend to defy the authority of parents. They test the limit. They test the water, right? And they begin to disobey, especially in our modern society. You see that in Africa, still there's this culture in Africa that the, the younger ones are obedient to the elderly. They don't, don't dare to raise their voice. But in our Western society, they changed. Today, students are beating their teachers, right? Unfortunately, we got to this point. Here we read, Obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. We are in a different sphere. We're not in the sphere of the world. We are in the Lord. In the Lord, it indicates that in the church, we have a heavenly culture, a different culture, supplied with grace. They are obedient to parents. So, saints, let us take them also to practice this word. I'd like to say one thing. All of us adults, uh, when we were younger, we were less. When we were to immerse in the Word, go to a GPC or pack, we have a fly in our stomach, right? Have a stomach pain, but saints, children, they don't have that. Children, when they see the adults doing something, praying for people, they just go like, oh, let's go, Daddy. They don't feel that. They don't ha don't feel that, that, that fly in their stomach because they have no concept. Teenagers, they have some. But less than us. Teenagers, okay, okay, let's go, let's go. They just go happily. All the young ones, they, they're a bit, they're difficult. And adults, the worse. The the elderly, the more concepts we have. So, saints, let us help our, uh, our 
our little children, they have, they don't have this concept. They, they just grow in this new culture. They don't feel this fly in their stomach. So, saints, for this, so children, our, our children, when they're supplied with grace, they are obedient to their parents regardless of how they are and how they treat their children. Some, maybe, did not have a wise parents to treat them. Maybe they were very strict, never dispensed love as they should, and then their children were a, a little bit of uh, outraged. But he says to obey them regardless of the attitude of their parents. Let us learn in this way. Because in the river of grace, you can do that. It doesn't matter if your father treated you well, properly or not, but the Bible tells us to obey in the Lord. In the Lord, we can do that by immersing the river of grace. And the, the expression here, for this is right, this is correct, is proper, the relationship of children with their parents. So in a proper way, is to obey. This is right. This is proper. This is fair before the Lord. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you, you may live long on the earth. Honoring is more than more than obeying. Not just obeying. Sometimes you are cringing your your teeth to obey. No. I don't know, but uh, honoring your parents to have a special place in in high regard, they they have a place, a special place in your heart, a place of honor, of prominence, and respect in your heart. This is respect, not as a not a retribution. You're not honoring your parents because they, they, they treated you well, not because they, they took a good care of you. It's not a retribution. To honor, it is our duty to honor our parents. The fifth commandment, honor your father and your mother, Acts 20, 12, that you may go well with you, that the land which is Lord God is giving you, this commandment is part of the first tablet of the Ten Commandments. In the first tablet, all, all the commandments refer to God. Meaning what? That God put the fifth commandment still in the tablet referring to God, concerning God. Because the second tablet, it is concerning man. So we need to understand that when we're honoring our parents, we're actually... Uh, honoring our origin. And if you trace back this origin, you see that God created Adam. So then you go all the way back to God. When you're honoring your parents, you're honoring God. Okay? And the first promise is to have a long life. Not to enjoy the good, the pleasures of sin, but to enjoy the good land, Christ, who has all the riches of water of grace. Going back to Deuteronomy 8, 7 again. It's not to repay your parents according to how good or how bad they treated you, but rather honoring parents is honoring God and it is honoring them unconditionally. And then you'll see the Lord's blessing. Oh, my parents did not treat me well. It doesn't matter if you, if you honor them, you'll have the blessing of the Lord. And... You, parents, do not provoke your children to wrath, to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and admonition of the Lord. Parents must be careful not to provoke your children to wrath. Sometimes, we as parents, we ended up provoking them to anger, causing them to be angry, wrath. You cannot answer them, you just feel that you are pushing them to live in the flesh. So let us not do that. Though in raising 
you have to have discipline. But parents must not uh, stir up the children to anger, or they, they, they should not abuse their authority or pressure children without giving them a way out or solution. Never push them, pressure them, use your authority, but always for a beneficial situation for your children. Always want the good for, not just to be brave with them, let us not abuse our authority. Right? Luke 11, 42. I'd like to read it with you quickly. Luke 11, 42. Just this portion with you. Well to you. Where is it? 42. Well to you, Pharisees. For you tithe mint and rue and all manner of herbs passed by justice and the love of God. I'd like to get your attention to uh, justice and the love of God. Saints, I don't know if you know, you are you who are studying. Today, you're still studying the script. Have you studied descriptive geometry? Who oh, no, knows something of descriptive geometry, you young ones? You know, Amir, have you been to this class? You missed this class? In the space. A plane in space. Another plane in space. Two planes in space. When two planes in space are connected, the intersection of these plans is a straight line. Isn't that right, Andrea? Righteousness of God is a plane. All the elements in this plane are righteousness. Do you understand? It's a plane of God. In this plane is righteousness. Emma knows what I'm talking about. You studied architecture, right? And there's another plane in space called love. Everything that belongs to this plane is love. But the two planes, they must cross. When they cross, there's a line. We need to walk as God does in treating us. Walk in this line, which belongs to righteousness and also love. Right, Herman? So, if you're in this line, you'll never be unbalanced. Why? Because some parents only use love in creating children and, and in parenting their children and they grow up without restraint and discipline. And others only use justice and discipline, treating them harshly without love. Let us learn with God how God deals with us. Let us see how God deals with us. Hebrews 12, quickly, Hebrews 12. Lord Jesus, forgive me, Lord, the time is advancing. Hebrews 12, 5. Do you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons? My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you're rebuked by him. Saints, our God, he rebukes us. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Today, saints, everyone, they feel creeps when they hear about scourging. If you endure chastening, God deals with, with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Let me skip to 10. For they indeed for a few days chastened us as ambassador, but he for a prophet, that we may be partakers of his holiness. 
discipline has this goal for us to partake of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame it may not be dislocated but rather be healed. So bringing up children in the admission of the Lord is to let the words that the Lord speaks dwell in the hearts of his people. Parents must inculcate, that is to repeat these words to their children at home, on the way, when they lie down, and when they get up. This is in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7. Since this is immersion in the word, pure and simply. Right? But Oliveira said that they are even making his, his two little children, they're learning to say these words in the immersion of the word. That's it, because the Jews, they are practicing these words in an outward way. You know, they're using all those ornaments in their hair, phrases, right? The doors, linens, to teach the word, to immerse in the word is exactly for that. At all times, if you go to GPC, if you go to PAC, as soon as it's 8 a.m., time to wake up, wake up call, they begin to hear sounds, all the word for immersion, that's it. During the day, an Uber immersion, on the subway, on the bus, on the streets, immersion, immersion. After, with some apathy, we'll get everybody together, immersion in the word, that's what God wants. God wants us to live like that. Okay, Lord Jesus. This is, in addition to giving biblical information, teaching the Lord's decrees, we must teach the way in which they, they should walk. That is to change their habits, give them a new culture. This is in Psalms 119, verse 33. Let us read it. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. I don't know if you noticed the difference here. Here it doesn't say, teach me, O Lord, your, your decrees. Teach me your statutes are all the biblical information to teach your statutes. But to keep the way of your statutes, it is to, to show a habit, a practice, a culture. So it's usually just to, to give teachings. I'm repeating that for those who are Ahead of the, for the teenagers, the whole generation, it's usually just to give them biblical information to our teenagers. We have to change their culture, to, to change behavior, to change a habit, a habit of life. And also Proverbs 22, 6, not read it because of time. This shows that we need to, to change a culture in the other generations. Praise God, our generations of this producing overcomers kids PO kids are getting to this culture and our teenagers do not have difficulty those who are causing revolution in Bayi it's amazing are the, the teenagers Lord Jesus we must have this healthy habit of preaching the gospel there's no culture pray for people preaching the gospel going to the P.O. kids, this will save them from the world's pernicious ideologies and will save them to serve the Lord. Now, a relationship and work. For, sorry to, to advance, but let us finish it. Ephesians 6, 5, where I am. Lord Jesus. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your master, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, 
sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service as man pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to man. So we'll try to explain it to you quickly. At that time, saints, the slaves, the servants, actually, they were slaves, they were servants. They were bought by the Lord. They were bought by their masters as their possessions, their their goods. So they had their, the right to their lives. However, in the church, we are all brothers and sisters. Colossians 3.11 tells us that there's no free or slave. We are all brothers and sisters. However, at work, they must be aware that they must obey their masters. Not because now they are brothers and sisters. Oh, we don't obey their masters. They don't do what their master wants, right? So they still are in the position of a slave. But to bring today's terms in the work relationship, we should not seek privileges as brothers in Christ in any work relationship. Oh, brother called me to work in his company. So then I confuse things in the church with a work relationship. And I think that in this company, on his brother, I have a privilege of perks that others do not have. I can rest whenever I want, do as I want, do as I will. No, 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 no. Right? If it's like that, no brother and sister will call others to work. Right? We need to learn to obey in the sincerity of heart as with Christ. We obey them as with Christ. The employee who has a brother in Christ as his superior must not mix up his church relationship with his functional relationship demanding special benefits or treatment. He should not serve as a man pleaser in verse 6, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, even in the work relationship, you're doing the will of God. You must serve willingly, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to man. Verse 7, this must be the result of the flow of grace and being filled with the Spirit. If he does something good, Knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive besides, in addition to professional recognition, he will receive the same from the Lord. If you're a good employee, the owner may give you some uh, something good, but from the Lord, not from them. And you, masters, do the same things to them, giving up threatening knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. The employer or boss must not treat his subordinate harshly or with threats. Outwork his subordinate to do a good job, but outside of it, the Lord has no partiality of people. He's Lord both of one and the other. Lord wants to build up his church. However, he wants to fill all the voids in us with the reality of Christ. This has to be reflected in our living, both in the married life, in our family life, and also at work. Brothers and sisters, we cannot be just proclaiming, speaking, and have no reality in our lives, right? Lord wants to even to fill with all of that in us. And then Satan will have no gap to work among us. Let me finish it, saints. Seeing if you will answer the calling to be a team of high performance. And if I can count on 110% of each one of you, let us bring the Lord back. Let us not be worried with ourselves. We want to do the will of the Lord. The Lord needs to fulfill His will on earth 
through us. Let us cooperate with the Lord. Do not let a minority to sweat their t-shirt. Let us sweat our t-shirts together. Let us be one man doing this one work. Jesus is Lord. Amen.